All right, so I continued and I disconnected each, each individual wire individually, one, and then I put the other one back. So I only had one wire disconnected at the time, uh, erased all the previous codes, uh, restarted the bugle, see what codes came up. Each time I did that, uh, it was a combination of the previous three codes that we had, the P0100, P0, what was it, 101, P0102, was it? Um, <clears throat> anyway, so if you have one of those codes, you know it's in regards to this. Um, I, I wanted to show you really how, uh, well, I guess I'll show you how I removed the, the clip. It's pretty easy. Um, in here, there's, there's a, uh, there's this clip like this. So you got to just go in there and you got to remove this clip, this little white clip. And then you just get a small screwdriver and you go up under here, up under it. And there's a little, there's, there's a little plastic, just like a hook. And then you just push down on it like that. And then you can pull it out from the back here. Um, that's just how you do that. You don't have to snip wires or anything like that. That's the easiest way to remove. And that goes for anything. If you're doing a fix or something, if you're fixing anything, you're having to fix with wiring, you could just pop these out and reuse them. If the wiring breaks right here, you could pop this thing out and then you could resolder it and stick it back in there. It's a good thing to know how to do. So anyways, that's that's what I did. Um, I guess I'll show you real quick how I identified how I identified the wires for the um how I identified the wires for the um intake air temperature sensor and uh I'll go over that real quick. So this is a yes I have nicer things than this, okay? So please don't get on me about the crappy equipment that I use. I have snap-on and all kinds of other good stuff I got like 10 of these I use them all the time they work decently some of them didn't work anyways that's why I'm using this because I have tons of them and I just use them because they work um, let's go to uh, we'll just go down we could just go down to right here so we got the, uh, the ohms for resistance and then um, let's see if uh, put it down here so you can see And then we go like this. And even these wires themselves, they have a small amount of resistance. So, um, I'm just showing you basically how I identified the, um, what was what. So you can see I need to clean this thing. Actually, look how dirty it is. It's ridiculously dirty. If you look close in here, though, there's a, there's a, a wire c coming up. And then there's the resistor. And then there's another. In other words, there's two wires right there. So put it on ohms like this hold this and you you want to touch one side of one of the wires and then the other other side of the other wire with this and then you want to it's kinda it's a little difficult to do especially when I'm trying to film but you just kinda just wanna uh, it'd be easier for let me set this down yeah it'll be easier if I set it down just I'm just gonna set it down right here and I'm just gonna go across those two two wires and you could you could take a look at right there see what it says Hey, what's going on? Because it's dirty. Little more difficult than. There you go. This thing's dirty, I gotta... Oh! Almost dropped it. Don't do that. So let's see.
Something's wrong with this multimeter. What the hell? Huh? Let me see. Alright. That's the problem. There it goes. Sorry. I had it on the wrong setting. Alright, I go across those two and that's what you got. So, I went, uh, I went across those two. Sorry for uh, all that. I want to cross those two wires and when I go across those two see I get that I get that right there and then basically what you do is you just it's kind of like uh, you want to get that same so I just touch it to this it's hard to do this in film guys I just touch it to this wire right here like that and I touch it to the other wires until I get something. So I, I just go across this one. Oh, you see, I already got it. But I, you know, I go to that one. There's nothing. I go to that one. There's nothing. Then I go to that one. And there's nothing. And then what I would do is move this one over to the next one, and then continue to go down the line. Then move that to the next line, next one, and then can, it's just like a process of elimination. You're just finding those two wires. You got to make sure you're touching them though. So. And I touch those two wires. I got that. These two wires right here. Those two wires are for the intake air temperature sensor. So those two wires, which are over here on this thing, it's the ones over here. Actually, wait, those two would be over here. Those two on the right. Right here, it's the, the these two on the left, so those two coming out. And then the rest of the three are for, the rest of those three are for um, the mass airflow sensor. And then we're going to take a quick look at the mass airflow sensor. And uh, we're going to see what we want to have right there. So, let me see if I got, I got the keys on in there. Actually, I could probably leave this right here. And make sure I have the keys on. Keys on. So we got the key on, the engine off. We're gonna move this to volts. Now we're gonna measure voltage, and we always wanna check our equipment. So what we want to do is, can you see that? What we want to do is we want to uh, test our equipment. And that just, I'm just going to go in the battery terminal. I'm going to touch the battery terminal, see what we got. So I got the positive to the positive. And we've got the 12 volts. So what I'm going to be doing, looking for is uh, I have this black right here. I got it hooked up to a ground, which is the battery negative. And then we're going to search for a power on this one. And then so like I said, we've already identified which ones are which for this thing. So we know the two, the two on the left are for the intake air temperature sensor and the three on the right are for the uh, mass airflow sensor. So we're gonna focus on these three on the right right here, which is uh, these other three. When you switch it around, it's those three. So we're gonna look for the uh, 12 volt feed. It should be a 12 volt feed. And in this case, we got a 12 volt feed right there. So the one all the way to the left, that's the 12 volt feed. We know the, we know the fuse is good on that. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put this directly to the battery positive. And then now I'm searching for a ground. Anytime I touch a ground on a vehicle, so now I'm touching a ground on a vehicle, I got the 12 volts. So I'm going to search right here. I'm going to look for the ground. And we know that is the ground. That's the ground for the mass airflow sensor. Okay? So that's the power feed. That's the ground. 
and then that one right in the middle it just so happens to be like a gold color that's the signal so we just identified every single wire we have the 12 volt feed we're not even looking at a wiring diagram right now we got the 12 volt feed for the mass airflow sensor we got the ground for the mass airflow sensor we have the signal for the mass airflow sensor and then right here is the 5 volt feed for the intake air temperature sensor and I'll show you that right now I'm gonna put this to a ground and then I have this right here now I'm searching for voltage I want to make sure my device is good I'm gonna check power to the directly to the battery so I, my device right here is working properly and then right here I have 5 volts that's the 5 volts that go directly to the um, that's the 5 volts that go directly to the mass airflow sensor and then this particular one right here we're gonna check that one and in that case we're gonna check right here with the ground and that's a ground that's a good ground for the intake air temperature sensor so you notice you got two grounds you got a ground right here you got a ground right here but what ground is for what well since we be we already know, uh, identified these two wires that are being for the intake air temperature sensor we need we know that ground is for the intake air temperature sensor and so you've seen five volts on this right here what I want to show you is what happens to that five volts when you plug it in so let me get my t-pin just gonna get a pin it's actually not even a t-pin it's just a sewing pin actually and then I'm gonna t-pin it right here actually it's this one the five volt feed so let me stick this in here That's going way too far. We've got to hit some metal in there. All right, so. See, I'm not touching nothing in there. i got to fix it. There we go. So you notice I got the 5 volt feed. Now remember, I got the 5 volt feed on there. Now watch what happens when I plug it in. So you got 5 volt feed, right? Now, watch what happens when I plug it in. So I get hooked up. Alright, I right, got 5 volt feed. Now watch when I pl plug it in. As soon as I plug it in, it drops to 1.7. 1.7 volts when I plug it in. The 5 volt feed for the intake air temperature drops to 1.7. And then with the increase of heat, like if I put this to this light right now, actually if I do it right here, let me put this light closer and you're going to see what happens is uh, watch what happens so I got as soon as I plug it in now if I could get some light right here it'll slowly go down with the increase of temperature the voltage decreases see it's decreasing slowly just the heat from these lights are gonna make this this see it goes down so that's how this works as soon as you plug it in you get a voltage drop on the 5 volt feed so we know that this uh, we know that sensor is a good sensor if you're getting these voltages you know the 5 volt Reference is good. We already checked the ground. We know the ground is good. A better thing for the ground, we could get a test light, hook the, the clip up to the battery positive for the test light, and then put the, uh, if we want to really check the ground, we could we could hook up the, uh, the test light and see if it flows some voltage through there. And uh, we might as well do that. We could do that. We're going to do that because when you're testing with this thing, it's not really flowing at any electricity. Let me grab my test light. And then... Uh, we can see if it's going to flow the electricity and uh, that way we could be 100% sure on our grounds give me one second I'm going to hook this up to battery positive the positive terminal and then every time we touch a ground it's going to flow the electricity it's going to turn the light on See the light turns on? So I want to double check the ground on this. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. 
So when I touch the ground, what I think is the ground, it lights. I don't know if you can see that, but it lights. It's lit. And then on this one right here, the ground for the mass air, it lights. Those grounds are good. Because we use the test light, we float electricity through it, we float it, we check, we just checked every single wiring right there. So, that's how you check it. If you, if you don't see any of that stuff, yours might be a little bit differently. You want to have a 12 volt feed for the mass airflow sensor. You want to have a good ground for that mass airflow sensor. You want to have a signal wire, those three wires, for the mass airflow sensor. 12 volt feed, that would come from a fuse. Signal, that would go to the computer. A ground, I can't, I can't remember if it's externally grounded or to the computer, it's probably externally grounded. So we found the 12 volt feed when we turned the key on, found that. The signal, because it has some voltage on it, I don't know if I showed you that, we know that it's connected to the computer. The ground, we just used the test light, flowed some electricity through it, we knew it was good. Now the two wires for the intake air temperature sensor, we checked the ground, we checked those two wires coming across here for resistance. We saw that it did have resistance, and then we checked the wires to see which ones were for the intake air temperature sensor. We checked the ground on the intake air temperature sensor and using the test light, or can, you can use this. It's better to use the test light because it flows the electricity. I have a test light hooked up to battery positive, I'm checking for a ground, and when the light turned on, we knew it was a good ground. And then I checked for the five volt reference for the intake air temperature sensor. So you gotta have that five volts there when you turn the key on. And as soon as we plugged it in, it dropped voltage. It dropped voltage to 1.7. And that's at about room temperature right now. So pretty much that's how you check everything. That's everything in its working order. If you have something on the five volt reference that's like three volts, then you got a problem either with a computer or a wire. If you check the ground and the ground is bad, if it doesn't flow the electricity when you hook up the uh, battery positive with the test light and check for the ground, if the light doesn't light, then you probably have a bad ground on the, that wire. Same thing for the mass airflow. If you check with the battery positive hook up to the clip on your uh, test light and then you poke it and, and it, the light does not turn on, then you probably have a bad ground. That's everything in its working order. That's how it's supposed to work. So, um, the, all those codes are the codes. All I, I disconnected every particular wire individually. That's all the codes we came up with. It was just P0110, P0101, P0102, was it? Or whatever the codes were on the previous video. So, hopefully you guys learned something from that. So, uh, I guess we'll go over the wires real quick one more time. Real quick one more time. We got... Uh, Right here, we have 12 volt feed for the mass airflow sensor in this vehicle. We have the ground for the mass airflow sensor. We have the signal wire for the mass airflow sensor. We have the five volt reference for the intake air temperature sensor. And then we have the ground for the intake air temperature sensor. Five volts unplugged. Once we plug it in, the five volt turns to 1.7 volts. And with increase in heat, it's going to drop the voltage. That's how it works. That's how this particular vehicle works. Doesn't matter if you have whatever vehicle you have. If it's this, if it's this type of sensor, that's what you're going to have. You're going to have five wires. You're going to have the five wires. You're going to have three for the mass airflow sensor, 12 volt power, ground, signal. And then you're going to have two wires for the intake air temperature sensor, which is the five volt reference and then the ground and then so anyways that's how we checked everything hope you guys are learning something if not we'll be learning something doing something else maybe we could learn from that thanks for watching comment rate subscribe